Before we get started today, I wanted to make one thing clear. Um, I'm really enjoying the show, like, a lot. I've gotten some comments lately that have been telling me I'm being too critical, and though I do take that to heart, I think the nature of these kinds of reviews lend themselves more to criticism than unqualified gushing. With one or two exceptions, I think every episode so far has been entertaining at the very least, if not great. But I'm coming at this without the baggage of, like, prejudice or nostalgia because I've never seen the show before. Um, so I like to think I'm being as objective as I can. Anyway, uh, this episode starts with sucking, so let's get to it, shall we? Will you stop the clatter, you bubble-headed booby? Hit me. The Outer Limits. At an energy research facility, a vacuuming custodian comes across a rather pernicious bit of fluff in the corner, and, after taking a few moments to suck on it really hard, she manages to get it up. However, she then learns the importance of a sturdy vacuum bag as her appliance explodes, releasing the pent-up horrors of her Pandora 5000 Deluxe. Later, a prospective new employee, Professor Stuart Peters, arrives at the facility with his younger brother only to be turned away by a security guard, who gives the pair a secret message that the place is doomed. We're doomed! 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 As they drive away and the guard smokes his cigarette, he is killed by a personification of his nasty habit. Peters comes back the next day, meets his new boss, who has a framed picture of a mushroom cloud over his head, and his new co-worker, the nervous Professor Linden, who acts like she's in an episode of Lost by evading all the man's questions and then trapping him in a hallway with a smoke monster. Meanwhile, Stuart's little brother Jory reassures his new girlfriend Gabby that he's not neurotic by acting paranoid about weird smells in his room and then talking about how he feels like his brother blames him for the death of their parents. Stuart is dead and Professor Linden's boss scolds her for being uncomfortable with killing him. Jory and Gabby stop by, looking for Stuart, and are turned away by the new security guard, who charms them with his not-at-all creepy suggestions for how to spend the evening. She's got nice legs. Girls with nice legs ought to be seen on the public dance floor. Back at their motel a week later, Stuart inexplicably shows up, and, when asked where he's been, lectures his little brother on the law of conservation of energy. According to natural law, it can't be created or destroyed, only changed in form. I don't know about you, but physics always makes me feel better. Then the brothers argue, at which point Stuart trips, falls into a bathtub, gets electrocuted, and dies for a second time. That's when Police Sergeant Ed Asner shows up to sort it all out. It's at this point we should back up and point out that everybody at the facility, including the resurrected Stuart, is wearing a weird device at their waist that they are very protective of. As it happens, these devices are pacemakers, and that's what electrocuted him. Getting back to the present, the sergeant then goes to the facility for answers, and like Stuart, he discovers he's walked into an episode of Lost where everything is needlessly cryptic. He winds up locked in the hallway with the smoke monster, but Professor Linden couldn't let him die before he had the chance to get a good villain monologue from the boss, who explains that the monster just came up out of the woodwork as a being of pure energy, and he used it to enslave his employees. I mean, he has a German accent. What more motivation do you need? See, I have almost total control of that energy force in there. Eventually, there is a scuffle, and Professor Linden winds up shooting her boss. He survives long enough to release the energy monster, which wrecks havoc throughout the facility. They try to contain it by reducing energy everywhere but inside the monster's cage, which kills everyone with a pacemaker, and Ed Asner eventually manages to lock it away. Jory then shows up, just in time to do absolutely nothing. I like this episode, and I'm not just saying that to overcompensate for my previous criticisms of the show. Whoa, that is a f***ing lie! It has a good mystery hook. The acting is above average, and the whole thing is a neat Frankenstein-esque parable about the atomic bomb and the dangers of unchecked scientific progress. The energy monster is pretty interesting looking too, so I can't even fault that for being a cheap effect. 
I wouldn't say this is my favorite episode so far, the lack of a genuine protagonist drags it down a bit, but it's definitely in my top three or four. And that's all I have on It Crawled Out of the Woodwork. Now, as always, do all those youtube things and check out my Patreon. And all that other good youtube stuff. But uh, until next time, this is the Unapologetic Geek, telling you to never be ashamed of what you love. As long as you're not hurting anybody. I've been with him every day. Every day! Except for a week. <laughs>